You like your little castle? Yeah? Well, that's gonna be a Nike factory now. Rea Trey, so stay, folks. Sorry for the delay. While we were traveling to Cambodia, I had some issues in the office and had to pull a Genghis Khan and crack some skulls. But we're back at full force for Surya Varman. And off we go. Starting in the jungle with a little camp, we are tasked with killing... Oh boy, it's another campaign where I can't say the names, isn't it? I don't care. Saying names takes too much of my time anyways. According to the wiki, it's wise to clear the small camps, so we do that while the economy grows. Look at this town center efficiency. Three resources right after Castle Age. We continue expanding the camp while the army moves north towards Red's base, who accept us with open arms. And here's why I never train skirmishers. A little castle is ordered on the edge of the city, for I am super excited for Ballista Elephants. I've been meaning to try the Ballista Elephants since I played a ranked match against Khmer and had Ballistas shoved up in every hole in my body. Castle completed, and while the Ivory Magedum is being trained, we send the Pikes to scout out the main goal here, killing Mr. Longname. We roll in with the few troops we had to test resistance. Just kidding, I waited for the elephants. Cavalry archers go in first to check what they have inside, and since they don't have shit, I send everyone. The rams slowly make way towards the gates, and then slowly carve the gates open. Sadly, as the army rolls in, they are weakened by the fight, and I am forced to retreat. Luckily I went ahead and started early to retrain my army. The forces unite, and continue plowing through Angkor while the rams are being built. I could probably just roll in and use the elephants, but if I fail on this one, it'll take longer to try again. Everybody arrives and starts shaking the gold coins out of the castle. After a short time, the king leaves the castle out of fear from being crushed and gets turned into Swiss cheese by the ballistas. Udayaditya Varman. What a name. Good we don't have to say it again, because the turn has been usurped. In 37 minutes and 10 seconds. Not everyone was fond of what Surya Varman did and came after him and his gang. Bad move. First we wall the southern base, as it's a bit less protected than my taste. Also here, with the little gate, cause I need a way to pass. We then gather all the troops we start with and set course to show the rebels not to mess with the ivory squad. Casual second town center, because I, I just can't call it crazy enough anymore. First rebel base destroyed and we continue mercilessly moving north. Thank you for opening the door, Mr. Scout. And since the AI doesn't like murder holes, we have free reign to use elephants to deal with the castle. Northern rebels almost pacified, just missing the fortified tower across the bridge. There, much better. North side of the map secured. Fear not, child. Surya Varman is very forgiving. Down south, I send a few troops I had to raid... Okay, another long name. Seems like their only defenses are some infantry and a tower, so I'll put my focus on the eastern rebels. Aww, the cat wants to come play with us. We arrive in the Eastern's main base and send the elephants straight away to deal with the castle. Once again being thankful to Buddha for another enemy without murder holes. Castle destroyed and the city becomes ours. Now we just need to replenish the elephant stock and go after the rest. I remember playing this scenario months ago and getting harassed from the beginning of the game. Were the enemies nerfed in a previous patch? Not that I'm complaining, this helps a lot my time, but I came prepared for another Gajamada's level of frustration. We storm Orange's final outpost, but it doesn't go so well. Still worked, but many units lost. Eastern rebels defeated, and I wish I knew more about Cambodia and the Khmer Empire. I don't know how to make fun of them. Whatever, we just need more of these bad boys. Meanwhile, Mr. Longname II recognizes my name and decides to attack me via water. It's okay, he comes by water and I stomp everything in their city. My love for camels has now switched to elephants. It helps that their army is just paper but they don't struggle with anything. The rope is tightening, Mr. Jaya Varma. Holy shit, these names are tough to say. Yellow decides to retaliate and sends everything they can against me, but our tusks are harder and pointier. We also somehow have Greek fire. Someone opens the door for us and dozens of elephants squeeze in and start stomping on the enemies. They all look so dopey attacking so close to each other. Jaya Varman is defeated, just his army missing. The elephants stay behind headbutting the stones of the castle until it falls, signaling another glorious victory for Surya Varman. Clinical stomping, in 44 minutes and 25 seconds. Crushing the rebellion was a turning point for our hero, but he knew there was a longer road ahead. Surya Varman scraped together the hardest band of soldiers he could find to send a gift to another up-and-coming leader, Rajendra. One platoon of battle elephants and another of ballista elephants. The mission is to deliver the envoy and fruit basket to the Andaman fort on the other side of the map. 
I thought these markings on the floor were Mesoamerican. The way is filled with hostile locals, some folks that just don't agree that much with Surya Varman. So like good leaders we are, we stomp their necks with elephants. The southern route is the preferred one as we can cut half the way by the river. They gave us a small navy to clear the river of rebellious past, while the troops board the transport ship. This really just feels like filler obstacles. Even without the demo ships, I would have been fine. Troops unloaded safely, and we continue to march south. The hostiles don't really like us, but they don't pose a threat. Thanks, Mr. Khmer. I appreciate the insider tips. Advised by a kind-hearted halberdier, we march south, even finding some new friends along the way. In most games, having a map edge bothers me a lot, but I never had a single issue with it in Age of Empires. Maybe since it's just black, I didn't even notice it. We end up face to face with the stronger force. Well, stronger than the previous ones. These guys didn't hurt much either way. Ooh, we're just around the corner. So close I can even hear the rebels talking about it. But once again, no issues. And we arrive at the Andaman port. Ooh, I gotta meet myself now. Just gotta make sure not to engage so we don't fuck up something in the timeline. A not so dangerous mission done. In 17 minutes and 51 seconds. Through the power of the gift basket, Surya Varman and Rajendra became best friends. So I must protect myself. Got it. No time to waste and we start moving troops and order a new town center. We also have a small army up north and after sending the cavalry archer to lure them out, we fight outside to avoid fortifications. God, I hate Mangonel so much. But their whole army dies and we start leveling their buildings. Much to my despise, this is a heavy naval map. First things first. Cleaning the main island off Tumberlingus come. Oh, what is that that is a die doing here? Helping me out. Good to see I wasn't completely useless as Regender. Not completely, but as close to it as possible. Why am I just standing around? I was probably just focusing on the economy. Imperial age upon us, time to beef up my chunky buddies. These sea raids are never fun to play against, and it always feels like a waste to build a navy since the objectives are inland. The worst part is that they don't even send the navy strong enough to do some damage. It's just so the sound rings and I lose concentration. It's okay, because we will have plus 3 attack elephants with all the blacksmith upgrades. That if I don't flip my desk due to rage inducing raiding. Cannon galleons on the way and going straight to their ports. Good to see that I woke up and decided to help. And look at this, building houses before I reach the population capacity. This is one of the first unique techs that I see that I know straight away that I need it. Double crossbow makes ballista elephants and scorpions fire twice. That means with the full body of ballista elephants, they shoot 120 projectiles. Whether they do the same damage, I have no idea. But if you time it right, it might make the sound of a machine gun. Anyways, Srivijaya's island is pretty much raised to the ground, with the navy even sinking transport ships that were coming to annoy me. To speed up the process, I send my other navy from the west, Thanks, Chola me. We sail south to try and find a suitable disembarking spot for the army, but Trivijaya doesn't like my presence and runs me away with fire ships. It doesn't stop me, and shortly after I'm back to bully him some more. Yeah, you like that, you fucking slut? Somehow some Chola forces appear on land and show me a very good landing spot. Time to get all my chunkers inside and look how cute they look just hanging out in the ships. Ivory squad on the way and unloaded safely right in Trivijaya's face. The elephants stomp mercilessly everything around until there is no stone standing. Whoa, Dukes of Hazard. I don't know what the trigger is to make Blue resign, so I'll just destroy every single one of his buildings. And yes, that includes you guys over here as well. Don't think I'll let all the annoying raiding slide. The camp is very compact, the elephants are just bumping into everything. Castles destroyed? I imagine just the production buildings for this nosy bitch to resign. God. Other me is not doing anything to help. There's one barracks here that I'm sure will be the key to end this. And I'm sure because there's literally nothing else standing around. Up north we run into Tumberlinga like they're made of paper and raise everything in front of us. Srivijaya crumbles to the power of friendship. Now what the hell do I have to do to get Tumberlinga to quit? Not much apparently. Tumberlinga calls it quits. Friendship with myself makes Srivijaya and Tumberlinga pay a dear price. In 1 hour and 31 seconds. In a perfect storm, war broke out completely in the Khmer Empire, and it was all in Surya Varma's hands to give his subordinates a proper spanking for misbehaving. There's a buttload of relics around the map, so we go for that first, securing as many of them as possible. And trebuchets, 
as we start with a decent army. Why are peasants like this? I haven't even started building sweatshops and they're already rebelling. You like your little castle? Yeah? Well, that's gonna be a Nike factory now. We march north because I don't remember how to get to their other camp and end up facing the Vietnamese folk by the water. And since I don't like commies, I'm turning this whole area into a giant 24-7 McDonald's. Aren't you just McLovin' this rebellion of yours? I'm sure Sudi of Arman had good intentions, but I just have no patience for bullshit rebellions anymore. First enemy down, and they accept us as the legitimate leader straight away. Maybe I'll save to build a giant McDonald's somewhere else. Maybe the rebels over here. They keep trying to resist, and that's just not cool. We start blasting at their castle, and once it falls, nothing. They just refuse to quit. Whatever, I figured that out later. Let's knock at Hari, Hari, Poon. Why are all the names so complicated? Just another reason to open a Gucci factory here. We roll in, torch everything, while the traps get into position to deal with the castle. The castle comes tumbling down, and so does the rest of their camp. We roll up north, and upon finding a broken bridge, we move south to end the Haripung Chai once and for all. What a nice and warm Khmer Blitzkrieg. Jesus Christ, that scout got evaporated. And so was the castle, soon to be followed by the remaining buildings. And then by Haripung Chai himself, two enemies down. I'm still building a sweatshop in your lands before insubordination but I'll make it an apple factory since you actually resigned. Now, where can I find the rest of those pesky rebels? There's nothing of them here... Ah, there they are. Just need to divert the traffic down there. Can't believe I missed that siege workshop. But to be fair, it's very well hidden and the buildings all look the same. And the rebels are crushed, solidifying Sodi of Arman's hold over the region. And Nirvadampada is finished in 35 minutes and 35 seconds. Total runtime? 3 hours, 15 minutes and 32 seconds. Very nice times for an okay campaign. I don't know, maybe I wasn't that into it for this run, but the campaign didn't really do much for me. I felt like most of the time I had no bullshit to talk about what was happening. The story is cool and all, but it felt like an improved version of Pachacuti in terms of fun. Partial time now stands at 147 hours, 17 minutes and 52 seconds. The King of the Hill DLC is finally out, and the next campaign is in the land of Towers, Georgia. Tomorrow awaits us.